Alright, so the uh, fly that I'm going to be tying today is called the Matuka. Uh, this is one of the first flies that I learned to tie when I got into fly tying. Um, back then, though, I didn't use all the materials I'm going to be using today. They were much simpler. It was basically some thick red yarn that I found uh, at Walmart and uh, some squirrel hair from the, the, the tail. Uh, just tie that up, put some super glue on it, uh, toss it in the water, and it uh, proved to be a very successful fly. Uh, looked uglier than sin, but um, it worked. Uh, so over time, I um, started experimenting with it, uh, some different materials. Um, so I, I hope you enjoy it. First thing I'm going to do is uh, lay down some thread. This is a size 2 hook. Uh, nothing fancy, it's actually just a hook that um, I had from, um, I think I bought it at Walmart. Uh, so again, nothing fancy. Uh, and we'll put some there. And I don't know if you notice it or not, but I actually left a little space here. Um, it's uh, from the eye. And that's just going to come in handy later uh, when we work with the rest of our material. Uh, first thing you're going to be tying in is some ribbing. And I just have some... Um, little metal wire uh, just gonna be tying that in and I tied in pretty tight uh, we're gonna be doing some pulling on it and so you don't want it to slip out uh, so I'll tie it in pretty tight and then once you get to the tip uh, put a couple extra wraps around there and that's just gonna prevent you from uh, cutting your thread later on so we'll work our way back here next thing we're gonna tie in is some red chenille uh, you can use any color you like, I just prefer the red. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just nostalgia from um, the colors that I used in my first uh, couple of ties. Um, but I just like it. I think it's a good color, it'll stand out. Uh, last thing we're going to be tying in is some holographic tinsel. This one happens to be uh, brown. Uh, so we'll just tie that in, and it doesn't have to look pretty, just tie it in, make sure it's nice and tight. Work your way back to where it's all on the same level, and then just wind your way forward. Uh, and again, we're going to stop a little short and give us some room to work with later. Uh, so the first material that we're going to be wrapping is going to be the chenille. And um, you want to wrap it fairly tight. Um, you know, don't go bending your hook wrapping it so tight. But uh, it'll just come out looking more uniform. The spacing will look a little bit better. So you want it on there pretty tight. And if it doesn't come out perfect, that's fine. Um, you know, the fish aren't going to notice these small little you know details so just do the best you can wrapping it around and you don't want to use too much chenille um, I know I have a really bad habit myself of cutting way too much and then I'm left with these awkward little pieces that I have nothing to do with so just a thought don't uh, don't cut too much yeah, it looks like I <laughs> again cut a little bit too much but that's fine uh, so we'll wrap this here, a couple nice tight wraps to keep it in place. Go ahead and get this trimmed. Okay. Um, I'm going to put an extra wrap or two. Don't pull too tight, you might end up snapping your thread and as we all know that's very frustrating. Next we're going to do the tinsel. This one, um, again, you want it to be uh, pretty tight with your wraps and actually I think I might go the other way with it this time no I'll go this way uh, you want it to be pretty tight with the wraps and the reason being is that uh, we're going to be putting that ribbing material over top of it and if you don't have a nice tight wrap on the tinsel um, the tinsel is going to be moving around everywhere and then the segmentation is going to be off now I'm not perfect with this this is a technique that I'm still working on. It seems simple enough, but getting these segments to be even is, uh, for some reason, very challenging. And you, it might not be for you, but uh, for me personally, it's uh, a little tough. Alright, so we get that in there. They were nice and tight. We'll clean it up here. 
and pull back on this a little bit, catch it, and then cut the remainder of it off. All right. Uh, so next what I have are some rooster feathers. Um, you can use any kind of feathers you want really. You have to have two of them. Um, and the length of your feathers is going to determine the length of your fly that you're going to be tying. Um, these ones are just a couple inches long, so it's like nothing too big. It's going to be a real small minnow that we're going to be um, trying to imitate here. And what I'll do is I'll measure it up. I'll see where the tip is. I'm going to, I know I'm going to tie it here, so I'll hold it. And then right about here, looks like it's going to where the first wrap is going to take place. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll peel these feathers back. And that's going to allow this these feathers to sit real nice on top of the fly, on top of the body. So we'll measure it again just to make sure. And if you don't have it just right, that's fine. You can always uh, do that later. Okay, but that, that looks about good right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, cut these little end pieces off here. Rip just a small couple fibers off there, make it real neat. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and wrap this in. You want it to be right on center. A couple loose wraps until you have it placed properly. And you can go ahead and come in with some tighter wraps. Uh, try your best not to catch any uh, fibers, um, any parts of the feather here. Uh, it'll just make it look better. If you do, again, that, that's fine. Um, and then you want to take your ribbing, start working that around the tinsel. Now when you get to where your feather is, what you want to do is with your left hand gently pull back. With your right hand go ahead and separate, make a little, little pathway there for you to be able to lay your ribbing down. And you want it to be pretty tight. Um, again, don't go overboard with it. But you want to uh, put some tension on there so it'll hold the feather in, the, in its proper place. And again, you want to do the same once you get to the other portion of it here. Gently pull back with your left hand or right hand, depending on how you're tying. You want to wind your way, pull these forward, and then pull them back. And be real gentle when you're pulling them back. Don't pull on the feather too hard. You might end up ripping out part of uh, of the feathers here, and, and it won't come out looking right. So, okay. And just take your time when you're doing this. You know, attention to to detail. Just to try to make it as as perfect as you can. And over time, it'll get to look exactly like you want it. Right. And then the last one, you just pull these back and uh, try not to touch the uh, these little feathers here, these little fibers with the wire. Um, it'll flatten them out and then they won't stick up like they're doing. Uh, so we'll just wrap in our wire here, cut the remainder of it off. Now um, you can make this fly using uh, a weighted head. Uh, put one of those uh, you know, cones on here. The uh, name escapes me right now. but uh, Anyways, you can put that on here make it more weighted. Uh, in this case I don't. I like to fish it just like this as it is. Um, all right, so that's going to be the basic body of it. Now we're going to work on making the the head. So we're going to take a few wraps here. Um, what I'm going to be using is some. This feather right here is from a Reeves pheasant. Uh, it's the back feathers. You can use any other pheasant uh, back feathers that you want, whatever you have available. I just happen to have uh, uh, 
a big bag of these just sitting around so that's one that I chose to use and it looks pretty good with it on so what I've done is I've cut a segment um, I don't know if you can see that but I've cut a segment of it off we'll slide that in there um, pinch it in place and just take a couple of loose wraps at first um, if you try to tie it in too hard at first it'll um, it'll kind of sit sideways the feathers won't be quite on center um, but that's the basic effect you want to get out of it. That's what's going on right there. We'll cut the remainder of it off. And then you want to uh, clean up. So wrap these. Okay. And then the last part is going to be some hackle. Uh, you can use whatever kind of hackle you have available, uh, grizzly hackle, or in this case I'm using uh, just some brown hackle. And I've prepped it here. I'm just pulling back the fibers a little bit. And this is the tip, so this is the, the smaller end. I'm going to go ahead and cut this portion off. Try to be as steady as I can. Okay, and then you want to, after you've caught it in, just kind of work your way towards the front of the, the hook there. Alright, and then you're just going to start moving this around. And what I like to do is as I'm wrapping, I will uh, pull the feathers back. And in doing so, I'm, I'm, the goal I'm trying to accomplish with this is just to make it more... Um, uniform that way they'll all fall back I kind of messed up here I uh, overlapped one of them not a problem we'll go back there we go okay so we got into the front here we'll tie it in snip off the excess all right, and then what you want to do is just kind of pull back, try to catch as many of those fibers, those loose ends as you can, and make some real nice tight turns here. Okay, just like that there. We'll set these back up. All right. Uh, and then what you're going to do is just kind of, like I said, clean everything up. Let's see, I got a little fiber here. Try to cut it out. All right. Uh, then you're going to whip finish. Okay. And there you have it, the Matuka. Again, this is a really good uh, fly to use for trout. It also works really good on bass as well. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you like what you see, just subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be putting out some more videos like these. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section. Uh, and thank you very much for, for watching my videos. And good luck out there.